Check this out. We could be Yeah, that, that sums up this video right there. Good morning, my beautiful superheroes, and thank you for tuning in. If you saw my last video, my Lulu Tron, you know why my voice suddenly is super raspy, and a few people said it sounded kind of like Sophia Bush, and if you're one of those people, you're my BFF, because she's a total babe, but no, I kind of sound like a chain smoker, because I lost my voice this weekend, and I have a cold, so that is where my idea of this video came on, and I was like, oh, what am I going to do for training? I know it's a lot of questions whether you should work out or what you should do when you're sick, so I'll explain what I'm doing. So whether you should train or work out when you're sick, it really depends, and so this isn't a concrete answer. But in short, my recommendation is normally just no. What people don't realize is working out and weight training specifically is a stress to your body, which is good. That is what we want. We want to stress the body because what our body does is when it creates that stress, it wants to adapt, so it's not as stressed next time. So it builds muscle, to adapt, so it accounts for the workload you did, it, which causes the stress, you adapt, and then you become stronger, build on more muscle. Now you throw in sickness, you're fatigued, first of all, it's not going to be a great workout, second, that's a lot of stress on your body and your immune system, and so your body can only repair itself so much. That's why you also can't just go from lifting, that's why you can't just increase workout volume like crazy, like one week do this much, and next week like quadruple it because your body can only repair itself so much, so it can only put on so much muscle in a specific amount of time. If you're sick and you're working out, that is a big stressor in your body and it's just gonna prolong how long you're sick. So say for example, you're sick and you decide to train and so suddenly your cold is like two weeks long or a week long, so that's seven to 14 days of really crappy, not optimal workouts because you're sick, you can't do it all. Versus if you look over that two weeks Ben, had you just stayed home, let yourself fully get better in two or three days, and then for the remainder nine, ten days or whatever it is, you have four hundred percent, so you could do the workout fully. If you look over that two week span, you probably lifted a lot more, had better workouts, just letting yourself fully recover and working out versus the flip side, just trying to like grind her out. And another thing, if you're like sick to the point of being contagious, it's just a flat out dick move to go to the gym sometimes that you're gonna just be like, oh my goals are so important and they're way more important than anyone else's there. It's just be a good person, help other people out. You know, that's one of the reasons we spread sicknesses is people go to the gym, it's a very dirty place with sweat and grime and so it's very easy to spread germs. My recommendation right off the bat is if you're sick, stay home, allow yourself to get better. In short, what I will be doing is not weight training for the next few days. I think I'll still be doing some lifts naturally even if I like don't do any cardio. I just feel good getting some oxygen flowing in my body and that's a personal choice. I'm not saying you have to, but I would encourage you, if you are really sick, to step away, especially when you sound like a chain smoker like me, to step away from the gym and allow your body to fully recover and two or three days off the gym is not going to make a difference. But if you prolong a sickness for two weeks, three weeks, have crappy workouts, that your immune system dive down into the ground, you can in essence be working out and throwing away weeks of progress. So I would encourage you to take a break from resistance training in the scheme of things. It is not the end of the world. Serious question though, with these pants that have loops like this, do you put the loop over the sock or under? Like, which is correct? Am I not supposed to wear socks? <laughs> Today's outfit, this is the hoodie I got from Lululemon. I reviewed it in my last video on Sunday, the Lululemon haul, so check that out if you want more details. My favorite part is how it's a bit higher top and goes down at the bottom. Super spandexy, cute, comfy. I got this tank top underneath with these Lululemon high rise wonder unders with the strappies and some rushes. I think you've seen similar bits to that. So, because I'm sick and I have work, I'm going to be cozy and enjoy. Now the question though is, are you really sick or are you just kind of being lazy? So this is my real time because sometimes, you know, there's that like you're not actually sick, you're just kind of just off that day and you're just kind of making an excuse not to go to the gym. I say go have a 10 to 15 minute walk, whether it's at the gym, just on the treadmill or just go outside, just walk, get some oxygen in your lungs, blood flowing and see how you feel. If you feel a lot better after that, 
maybe your workout is okay and you're not as sick as you feel or you just simply need to get out of the house because that's causing you to be stuffy, lethargic. On the flip side, if after 10 to 15 minutes of just walking you feel even worse or about the same, it's a good sign that your body wants you to rest. say that 10 to 15 minute walk it is not like scientifically proven it's just something I've noticed with myself has worked so it's something you could try yourselves also we'll say with that like you should take into account if you're always getting sick I like, guess first time I've been sick in probably over a year like, I'm next to never sick and I do pride that I recover properly I take plan D loads I have rest days I get enough sleep I get my micronutrients I get enough water so my body recovers so my immune system is always optimal and so that's why I don't next to never get sick but it it's cool when you learn about yourselves, you learn why you got sick. So I'm not remotely surprised why I got sick. And let me explain. Last week, I don't know why, I just had awful sleeps. So I was busy, getting to bed late, getting up early, maybe like five or six every single night. On top of that, my water was off. Trevor got sick because his whole football team got sick. And usually he does get sick every once in a while from being around the football guys, but he'll bring it home to me and I still won't get sick because I find my immune system's great. But then this weekend, we went out. I didn't get any sleep on the weekend. We drank a lot of alcohol. Didn't get enough sleep. It's really dry out in Halifax. It's usually quite humid. So my voice was scratchy. We hung outside a lot in the cold. My food was off. My water was off. I wasn't getting in any much fruit or veggies because we were trying to like clean out the pantry. And it was just like all these things thrown in. And I haven't had a deload in a long time. And it is a newsflash that so my body's been trying to recover, trying to recover. And last week, I had a big problem trying to get a pump in the gym. And even though I was eating a lot, like my muscles just didn't feel full. I felt fatigued and weak, and then I got sick. And it's very likely that because I was pushing myself so hard in the gym, not taking time planned off, a planned deload, that's what it is, time off in the gym, and then all those things happening, my body, like, it would be more surprising if it didn't get sick. And so now I'm suffering the consequences of that, but it's a great realization. Something you can also do if you're sick, plan a deload. Take some time off the gym or try other activities that aren't resistance training. Maybe like don't go into the extreme, do more like list style, steady state, but try some other exercises. Go on a hike, get out, get some oxygen to your lungs. People are watching me, YouTube. So yes, my plan is to do a deload this week. Now, it's tough to say. I don't know if maybe I was overworking and that's what caused the sickness or because of my sickness that just naturally came from other reasons. That's why I was feeling so fatigued in the gym. You'll never really know, but the two tend to go hand in hand. Obviously my immune system's down, that's what caused me to be sick. So there's a lot of different ways to approach a deload and I will go into that maybe in a future video, or not maybe, I will. But in essence a deload is you can only progress so far when you're weightlifting. Like there's only so much muscle you can put on, so much weight, and you just need to take time to step back Reduce your volume, let your muscles rest, build, because of course your muscles build when you're at rest. Reduce the volume, let them build, and then you begin again, and that's how you recover optimally. And so I'm doing a planned deload, but I also want to still work on my core and glute activation. So you guys, I've mentioned that a lot of times, fix my APT. So I'm still gonna do my corrective exercises and like warm up. The only reason is those aren't necessarily fatiguing my body in any way. It's more of a mind-muscle connection. It's just helping me so when I actually apply those movements to weighted exercises, I'm still activating the right muscle. I'm still doing those, but then I say I'm just going to do it at home. It's a great thing sometimes to take a delo. Like, I love the gym. Don't get me wrong. Any human is going to get kind of stuck and sick of it and lack of motivation. You're not going to try as hard because you're not motivated because it's same old, same old. Sometimes take a step back and take a break from the gym. You'll come back so much more motivated, work so much harder, and it's that novelty factor. Yes, I'm going to try my best to actually avoid the gym. I'm just doing the core and glute activation exercises at home and those corrective exercises. And then in a couple days, return to the gym. I will just go on light walks, maybe a light bike ride, stuff like that. And maybe, you know, a yoga class, things very relaxing. I still want to move my body. I don't believe in just like 100% sitting around because I just begin to feel lethargic. But even if that is still killing me, then I will have a complete rest day. So that would be my recommendation in terms of deloads and when you're sick. summary when you're sick don't feel bad about missing the gym let your body recover you'll come back stronger and better and it's okay to take little breaks as long as you're not consistently if you find you're always sick always having to miss time off in the gym you're always fatigued I would recommend hiring someone 
to look over your workout plan, make sure you're not have too much volume, that you're not overworking, that you're properly fueling your body, you're not in a chronic deficit, that you're getting enough micronutrients, enough water, enough sleep. And if you're getting all those things and still having problems, see a doctor, there could be a bigger concern. But yes, that is what I'm doing. I'm sorry you have to hear me once again with this awful voice. Hopefully it will be better by Friday's video, so now I'll show you the little exercises I've been doing for core and glutes. I'll be going on light little walks, doing this, and then resting and making sure to get in my water and micros, and that's how I hopefully will feel better. But if you guys got any tips about when someone loses their voice, and please let me know, comment down below. Thank you for tuning in, my sweet I appreciate it.